here at the Panasonic booth at CES. I'm joined by Jeremy Young, CEO of Atomos, and we're here to talk about the hot ticket of the show, for videographers at least, the GH5. And here it is, right with one of your products. What have, what have we got? Okay, this is the Shogun Inferno, and you can record directly from the sensor in 4K 10-bit 422 DCI or 3840 2160 4K, which is quite a, a revolution. Um, it's been the holy grail for a while, 10-bit 60p 4K, which hasn't really been delivered from affordable cameras. You have to go really quite yeah, high there end. There's no other mirrorless that does that. There's no other mirrorless that does that. So this is a major announcement from uh, Panasonic, which is riding off the back of the huge success of GH4. We also grew significantly from the GH4 Shogun um, in interaction, and that's a 4 to 2 10 bit 4K 30 solution. So, all those older customers will be able to use 4K 25 and 30 10 bit 4 to 2 with you the have GH5. A, an original Shogun and an Assassin, mm -hmm. you a can flame, do yep. any flame series, yes. you, get, you get what? You get 4K 25 or 30p or 24. Um, at 422 10-bit from this 6K sensor, which means you'll have a, a, a slight increase in resolution perception re of resolution, which is about 20%, which looks much crisper and cleaner, just like we got a, an increase in resolution when we recorded 4K but delivered HD, and when we recorded HD and delivered SD, so what same we're, thing. What we're gonna get with this combo, the Inferno and the GH5 is what? You will get a, from the 6K sensor, you will get a really crisp and clean 4K 60p 422 10-bit recording. Okay. And at the moment, we're not sure what happens if you go to the new high-resolution anamorphic mode that they're, they're going to have. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, it's a little unclear. Um, we are working with Panasonic closely, and we're, we're asking them, as I think everyone will be, to be able to monitor that in 4K externally. Um, or even in HD externally. Yeah, you want to be able to de-squeeze the whole lot. You know, you, 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 know, you, you want to de-squeeze it. You also, um, we're also asking them to put a, a, a log curve on that output so that you can see what your photos will look like on an HDR TV, which is where most people are going to view, just like I do at home. Apple TV, 4K. That's where I'm viewing my photos. If, if I can make them HDR, that would be fantastic. Then I'm going to have to shoot those in HDR correctly. That's the best way to do it is on a monitor like ours, which is built for HDR monitoring. Okay, so the next question is, in terms of, uh, they've put uh, LUTs for the first time, loadable LUTs into the camera. Yes. Um, so, which is great if you want to use that on your internal uh, EVF or your LCD. Yes. But we've, I, we just had a demo, I think, which, which, as far as I understand, it's just like you can um, use one LUT in the camera and output a clean signal to the recorder where you can then use another LUT of your or choosing. Or HDR, etc externally so what did that is that right yes that is correct so what it effectively allows you to do and you'll be, you'll be seeing a lot of education from Atomos on the HDR workflow on automated over HDMI locking to V logs and S logs and different log curves so that it's not kind of a, a bit of a scientific episode like it is today mm -hmm. but what that allow you to do is view what your final SDR footage will look like at the same time as what your HDR footage will look like on an HDR TV. So that means on the smaller monitor, you'd probably view your SDR, and on the bigger yeah, 709, monitor, 709, 709, 709 down here, from the log, which shows you what it will look like, and then you'd be able to view the full log to PQ or HLG, which is what we're showing on our monitor. That's it's, it's kind killer. of mind-blowing, but it it's, 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 it's very interesting. Actually. It's extremely interesting. And what we're now working on, in fact, I'm leaving CES to go to the, the NLE makers, is getting our settings from the panel, which the user, the shooter, who is the main person, acquisition is the best time to do these things, as you know, mm -hmm. Dan. Well, I would argue that as a camera dude. Yes, you yeah. would argue. I'm sure every colorist would argue the opposite. But yeah, however, if we give a better result to the colorist, there's, there's, they can be more creative and less cleaning up the mistakes from the cameraman. And not that there are many, Dan, of course. From, from none from me. None, none from me. you, of course. And we're going to these NLE makers and the color correction packages, and, and we're exporting the files from us, and we're working with the camera makers to get the data from the camera so that that follows the file through. And that means the LUT that was used when you were inside the camera should follow the file, as well as the settings for PQ and HLG from the log settings when you were doing the exposure setup, should follow through so that when, when you finish, you just go print to SDR, print to HDR. And then you've got the relevant formats, just like we did in Rec. 709 if I wanted to print to DVD or go to an analog source. Those days are now, should be back with this type of workflow. We're not quite there yet, but this is the embryonic stage of that amazing workflow. Okay, um, Inferno, it's shipping. It's shipping now. Um, when this ships, will the whole lot 
work or are we, is absolutely it, cause the, I mean there were some of this stuff comes some of the Panasonic stuff is phased right in terms of its release is that is that right yes that's our understanding um, I, Panasonic keeping pretty close to their chest exactly what what is going to be released at what stage but we are working on the full feature set of that in the beta forms with them and by the time this actually ships which I what's Panasonic saying March, March today then, and which they they usually hit yeah, those soon. dates. That's that is very soon. soon. Um, we will have all of the features working today. We all we already have most of the features working, like anamorphic, 4K 60, 10 bit 422, 4K 60, at uh, at 8 bit as well at 420. If people aren't looking for that non-banding, I don't know why they wouldn't. But if if they're not interested in in a little bit higher quality and. We are also doing the DCI, which is a big thing because some of the older products didn't do that over HDMI, whereas the Inferno series does do that. Great. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to trying this camera out. And um, yeah, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Dan.